along the molecule. Uh, so um, it, it went from uh, uh, 700 milliseconds to 37 milliseconds. Uh, so again, uh, thinking about technological applications for this, uh, if we had a long distance quantum energy teleportation protocol, uh, you could potentially send uh, energy or signals uh, 20 times faster than via classical uh, channels. Um, and that actually, so that, that's one of the things that uh, Hota uh, describes is a long distance uh, quantum energy teleportation using another special state of the quantum vacuum called a squeezed state. You know, we looked at vacuum polarization. Uh, now, again, though, uh, this isn't going to be uh, instantaneous uh, because with this protocol, it still requires um, this classical communication channel. Uh, so although um, it is potentially uh, uh, like 20 times faster um, in some case scenarios, like what was observed uh, with the energy transfer along the uh, orga organic polymer, uh, this isn't going to be instantaneous yet. Uh, but there is actually uh, a article I just published that describes a mechanism for real uh, quasi-instantaneous trans teleportation. Uh, and actually that might be uh, our next um, unified physics review. Uh, I was just clicking through to see if I had anything on that. Um, now, ideally, to truly realize Hoda's original quantum energy teleportation protocol, zero-point energy would be harvested from systems whose ground states naturally features uh, quantum entanglement uh, in the same way uh, that the fundamental quantum fields that permeate the universe do. Uh, this would enable some exciting possibility, possibilities like long-range quantum energy teleportation, uh, utilizing this uh, a squeezed state uh, from an informational viewpoint, uh, the spatial correlations of the zero point uh, fluctuations, including quantum entanglement, decay as the distance becomes large. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why um, in uh, the kind of communication we might call telepathic, um, it, it is it does have uh, some variability and the strength depending on uh, your proximity uh, to the sender and receiver. Um, but uh, Ohoda has a mechanism uh, for, for long distance uh, quantum energy teleportation um, and it has to do with a, a, a inducing a squeezed vacuum state, uh, which is a very interesting methodology uh, that produces uh, this abrupt expansion of the space where quantum fluctuations of the field become severely stretched. Uh, and in this way, he, he can kind of chain the quantum entanglement over much larger distances, the strength of the spatial correlation uh, over much longer distances. So there's future experiments uh, already being proposed and uh, in the works uh, that uh, should be very exciting. And the technological applications of this are going to be huge, not least of which because this is really getting into uh, space-time engineering. Uh, and it's via uh, space-time engineering uh, that we're going to get uh, the kind of technological capability to harness quantum vacuum energy, uh, to develop gravitational control, technologies um, and other uh, very important um, applications of being able to directly harness the quantum entanglement, the intrinsic connect, uh, uh, non-local 
connectivity network of the quantum vacuum, like instantaneous communication or signaling. Uh, th those things become possible uh, when you begin engineering the space-time metric. So communication via like a, a wormhole, uh, maybe even travel via a wormhole. So you know, these, this gets into very uh, interesting and exciting potential uh, applications. Uh, but to this day, scientists and popular commentators alike are still inclined to refer to the vacuum as empty and nothing, despite the myriad theoretical and empirical demonstrations of the substantive nature of the quantum vacuum. You know, uh, we've actually just kind of looked at uh, kind of briefly a few examples, uh, but you know, after going through that, it's just, it almost is incredulous uh, that you know, physicists will still, and maybe even non-technical people uh, will still uh, regard the quantum vacuum energy and so that the, the energy of space that's all around us that makes us uh, is somehow not real, uh, somehow just imaginative, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, hopefully after this review, we're all on the same page that, uh, you know, there is no doubt about the uh, very real and substantive nature of that ener energetic flux of uh, space and uh, uh, quantum entanglement, connectivity, non-local connectivity of the unified field. Um, so I, at this point, it's probably time to stop referring to space as empty and the vacuum is nothing. <laughs> you know, even if it gives kind of kind of an air of mystique to these experiments, saying like, uh, you know, physicists or scientists draw energy out of nothing, uh, but it promulgates a common yet erroneous notion of the fund fundamental nature of our reality. And it's time to acknowledge the paramount logical conclusion. Nothing does not exist. It's time for scientists and engineers to begin taking the quantum vacuum energy seriously and for further exploring ways in which we can uh, harness the nearly limitless energy potential of zero point energy density for space time engineering, quantum communications, uh, including potential non-local communications, and of course, uh, energy generation technologies. Uh, as an additional interesting consideration, uh, you know, we have the uh, traversable wormhole teleportation protocol. So uh, it's very interesting to consider the quantum energy teleportation protocol in terms of that uh, ER equals EPR holographic correspondence conjecture. Uh, and that is explored a little bit further in uh, an article that uh, I just posted uh, to the Resonance Science Foundation on uh, uh, counterfactual communication, quantum communication protocol, uh, and um, having a very uh, a, a full realization of teleportation and uh, sending information and energy via uh, wormholes. Uh, so thank you all uh, for participating with me, and uh, I hope that. Uh, that was, uh, we all learned uh, some things, um, uh, gained some greater insights into uh, unified physics uh, and uh, the exciting developments uh, that are almost accelerating every day. Um, in just the last few months, there's been uh, the uh, traversable wormhole qubit teleportation protocol, uh, the quantum energy teleportation protocol, producing particles from the quantum vacuum with the Schrodinger effect. Um, and so it's uh, a, a very exciting time uh, for the development of unified physics as uh, quantum gravity theories are going beyond just the theoretical purview and they're being tested empirically in the lab. And of course, that's uh, kind of the um, most important aspect in the development of any scientific theory is that you test it uh, via experiment uh, to see um, does a theory comport with reality. Uh, and uh, it's very exciting that 
uh, some of the, the most recent experiments that have come out are validating uh, many of these quantum gravitational, what were just hypotheses um, like the ER equals APR for holographic correspondence conjecture. Uh, the experiments are showing that uh, quantum entanglement, uh, the physical mechanism underlying that seemingly mysterious effect isn't so mysterious. It's an Einstein-Rosen bridge, uh, traversable wormhole connection. Uh, so um, at this time, uh, we can open it up to take a few questions. Um, I don't